If you would like to learn how to build an XML sitemap in Umbraco CMS, this is your lucky day, pal, because this is the video for you. My name is John, and within this video, I'm going to go through all the steps and all the code that you need to follow in order to create a custom sitemap within your very own project in Umbraco v Nan. Now, whenever we're building a new project, you will always need to include a sitemap XML if you want to look like an absolute pro. So sitemap XML, I'm sure we all know the purpose of it is that when the Google little spider comes to our website, you give it a file that has all the pages in your website. The indexer will then be able to find all your content. So all the lovely people who use the search engines will be able to find all of your website's content. Now in Umbraco v9, we're going to have to build things ourselves. Historically, in previous versions, they were free community plugins that you could use. However, as of yet, no one has built one for Umbraco v9. So little tip for you if you're looking to build something. Now, aside from, you know, community packages or not, historically, I've always built my own XML file. And the reason for this is because one, you know, I like building stuff. And the other reason is I think understanding the steps required to make this work is actually super important. And there's going to be some stuff here which will allow you to learn more about Umbraco CMS so you can be an absolute Umbraco badass monster. So if this all sounds good to you, carry on watching. We're going to start building it very shortly. If you haven't come across any of my videos before, you want to hit the subscribe button because you want to learn more about Umbraco. We're in the middle of a series on Umbraco V9 where I'm going to teach you everything you need to build a kick-ass website. So hit subscribe, hit like, hit something except for your own face. So assuming we've done all of that, let's go on and start building this site. Before we begin today's tutorial, all the code you're about to see is available for you to clone and inspect in my Umbraco V9 starter kit. Now from first hand experience, I know how annoying it is trying to copy code from a YouTube video. So yeah, if you want to play along at home, get this working in your own projects, all you need to do is head over to my GitHub, which is a John D. Jones. On the homepage, I've pinned my starter kits. So it's the John D. Jones and Braco V9 starter kit. If you want to be a boss and make me feel good about myself, you can also follow me and start the repo. So yeah, follow me, I can get to 100 followers and I can be an absolute big dog, the biggest of dogs. Now the XML fight, uh, sitemap that we're going to create today is shown below. It's very beautiful, I know. Now there's a few things to note. First, we're going to access it using this slash sitemap. And we can change this if we want to. We'll show you how to do that. Now the file is being returned as XML rather than HTML. So in order to do this, we're going to have to change the context, the context content type of the request. And we have to set that to text XML. So that's going to be a bit different. Now we're going to have to create this XML structure. There's a few ways of doing this. Um, I'll go through the way that I like doing it, which is in a view. However, it's also possible to build everything up within a controller. Again, do what makes you happy. Now, sitemaps are pretty easy. All you need to do is define loads of these URL elements. And within here, you need to define a lock and a last mod. And in here, you can see that we've got the full URL. We've also got this XML date stamp. So I'll show you how to create that. Now, when it comes to generating uh, URLs, the URL helper by default will only return these segments. So if you want to return, you know, this part, this part here, we're going to need to pass in some additional parameters to the URL helper, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So let's get this party started. Sorry. Okay, so the first thing we'll need to do is create the controller. So in this example, I've got a class library, which is called John D. Jones core, because I like putting all my custom code in a separate folder. In here, I've got a folder called controller, one called vanilla, and I've got a file which is called XML sitemap controller. Now this controller is very, well, pretty basic because that's the way I like to build my controllers. First off, you need to inherit from a vanilla MVC controller. Sometimes it can be a, a pain to find this if you've got things like controller in your namespace. So you need to prefix it with Microsoft aspnetcore.mvc.controllers. 
Now, as you can see, my controller is really simple. I'm passing in this IXML sitemap service. So this is a custom thing that I've created that we'll go into a little bit more detail in a minute. And then all I'm doing is generating some items and passing that view model down into a view. Now, this is where I could say that I'm doing all of my XML transformations, setting the request type within a view in the CSHTML file. Now, some people might not like that. I find it much easier. However, if you want to do everything within a controller, you can do a uh, new content result. You can return this content result. And within here, you can set the content type. Hopefully you can see that. And you can set this to text slash XML. And then within here, you've also got access to a content property. And in here, you can basically just get all your data and pass in a view model. The problem with doing this is obviously it's much harder to actually structure some of the um, schemas that you need to reference. However, you know, if you want to do it this way and you want to spend a little more time setting it all up, do what makes you happy. Now, because we've got a normal vanilla MVC controller, for those of you who've been watching this series, you will know already that we need to register something within the routing table. So unless you're using a Umbraco specific controller, you need to map something explicitly. And within the uh, with .NET 5 and ASP.NET.Core, you'll have to do that within Startup. So the Startup file will be found within your web route. In there, you'll find a configure method. And in here, you'll find something which is called use Umbraco and you can do this with endpoints. Now, it's possible to add in all your rules within this section here. However, as I've covered before, for good practice, I recommend you put them in a custom extension. My rule in particular looks like this. So we've got app endpoint route builder dot map controller routes. We've got a name, which is arbitrary. It can be anything you want to use what makes you happy. Next, you give the URL. And remember in my example, it just said uh, sitemap. For best practice, I should have probably done sitemap.xml. However, let's just keep it at uh, sitemap at the moment for the time being. And then within here, we just pass in the actual thing we want to map it to. So in this example, we want it to map XML sitemap and we want it to map to the index action within there. So remember the controller is called XML sitemap controller. All simple stuff, we all know this hopefully, or the old pros know this anyway. If you're new to it, it takes a while to learn it all. So as you can see in my controller, I'm also passing in this custom code or controller service, whatever you want to call it, that I've created. Now, in order to do dependency injection with an Umbraco, you're going to need to register something in that class specifically with the uh, dependency injection handler. And again, I've covered this in a few videos. What you want to do is create a new class, implement from iComposer. This is going to make you implement from this builder thing here. And from builder, you can use builder.services.addTransient. And transient is the recommended way to use dependency injection. And all you need to do is map your custom interface to your concrete class. Save me and ask going back to this file ever again. I'm also going to be using a setting service within XML sitemap service. And as you can see, it's been registered here. So pretty much any single time you inject something custom, basically create a composer, register it, you get the gist. Perfect talk. Okay, so let's zoom back in and let's go back to our XML service. So within my class library, I've got a folder called services and I've created this custom class XML sitemap service. Now in here, I'm creating a class. It's implementing from that interface. I'm passing in two dependencies in here. So that I setting service I briefly talked about. And all this is basically doing is getting the, the home page item. So I'll show you the code to do that. Now, the reason why I use a setting service like this is because if you need to access the home page in like 20 different places, instead of duplicating that code everywhere, it's much easier to use dependency injection, add that code in one, lo one location and avoid violating the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. Now, the other thing which is kind of interesting if you're new to .NET Core and MVC5 is I'm passing in the IHTTP context accessor. Now, the way that we access HTTP context has changed from .NET Framework to .NET Core. 
So in framework, we used to use HTTP context.current and dot current is obviously bad practice and used system.web. So now we just use the HTTP context accessor. The other way of accessing it is always from within a controller. In a controller, if you really want to, you can just use HTTP context and you'll get access to it that way. So for better practice, you know, I recommend you inject stuff using the accessor rather than passing properties directly. However, you know, the choice is yours. So within this service, we've got a method which is called get XML sitemap view model. So I've created two view models, one which is called sitemap view model. This is pretty simple. All it is is an object that returns a list of site core item view models. It's got the website URL and then it's passing the HTTP context down into the view because we're going to need this to set the request context type soon. And if you're just wondering, this sitemap item view model, dead easy, it's just got a URL and a date property. And remember, this thing here is basically going to map to the location and the URL here. So it's all very easy. Now back to our controller. What we need to do is get the list of all the items within our content tree. And the way that I'm going to do this is within the setting service. You don't have to use a setting service. However, I've got this thing called homepage. So if we go to implementation, what we're doing is injecting this i context, um, i unbraco context factory. You can also use the i unbraco context accessor if you want to. The context factory is probably a little bit safer, but let's be honest, there's probably no big difference. I just like this because it's a little bit safer. Now to get the home page is super simple in code, although not that intuitive. So what we can do is use the accessor to get the access to the context. And using Umbraco context, you can do content get by root and you just pass in the home page URL. And this thing here is going to give you access to your home node. Now I'm using my website with a Mac uh, with um, Umbraco model builder and I've got a document type with an alias called home in the back end. So all I need to do to create a beautiful strongly typed object is pass in my item and I also need to pass in this annoying I published a published value fallback. And if you're not sure how to get that, again, all you need to do is inject this into your controller or service. So I published a value fallback, pass it directly into your model, jobs a given. So now we've got access to our homepage just using this code. I'm using the get descendants method. Now again, because this is only going to get called very infrequently, I'm using get descendants. This probably isn't the most optimal way in terms of performance. There's probably better ways. However, you know, it only gets run once in a blue moon. So I think descendants does for pretty much most of the time. Now, the first thing we need to do is return that string date. And in order to do that, we can use the XML, dot, uh, XML convert method. So we can do XML convert to string. We can pass in our date time, which is the dot updated date. And then we can use the XML date time serialization mode dot UTC. So UTC, not UFC, none of this punching around stuff. We're talking about dates here, aren't we? Now, in order to render out the URL, as I was saying, by default, we can just use the dot URL method. And by default, if you use this, don't pass in any parameters. What will happen is you're going to get the relative path. Now, if you look at the overloads, you can see that the first parameter is the culture code. Now, if you're using um, like a default single variant language, you don't ever need to pass in the language code. So this is the reason why we can use the method without any overloads. However, if you want to return the absolute URL, you can either pass in the culture code or pass in null. doesn't really make a difference. Now, for the second parameter, this is the thing we care about. You want to do the URL mode, and this needs to be set as absolute. And absolute basically means it's going to give you the first part of the URL. 
So this is really easy, kind of useful. And if you ever need to use a full URL, you now know the trick. So as you can see, we've got our homepage URL. Using descendants, we're getting all items within our website. Using the URL with its overload, we're getting the correct information. Now we can have a look at how we return this back to our view. So within our controller, we're passing down this view model and then we're passing the view model down into our view. So creating a view is the same as creating any old view. There's nothing too crazy or special going on here. So within my website, within the view folder, and yes, you can see that, I've created a folder called XML sitemap. It needs to match the controller name. And in here we've got index CS H TML. And in here we've got some interesting things going on. So first, because we're returning XML, we don't want any layouts to anyone in that jazz. Now we also need to set a URL so we can access that using that property. Now the first thing we need to do is change the response type. So by default, we're going to return some HTML. And when we're working with a sitemap, we want to return text slash XML. And remember I said I was passing the HTTP context down through the view model. So I'm accessing that right here and then I can use response.content type. So doing this is kind of similar as how you used to do it in the .NET framework. It's just accessing this context needs to be passed down into a view model now rather than using the context.current within the view itself. Then finally, we need to start saying the context response right async and we need to set the XML tag. Now doing that, we've now got an XML document and you are free to create elements and do whatever you want. So to create a valid sitemap, we need to add in this bit at the top here. And this is basically part of the sitemap schema and specification. We're just gonna pass it to the correct schemas and all that jazz. Then finally, all we need to do is a simple for each node, uh, for each loop, where we're just gonna go through each item within the page tree, render out that URL element, and then render out that lock and last mod. And job is a good one. You now know everything that you need in order to become a complete XML sitemap boss within Umbraco CMS. And I think this video had some interesting things. So I think the, for me, it was accessing the HTTP context using the new method, because obviously that's changed. Accessing absolute URLs, because that's obviously using the same helper, but maybe it's not that intuitive. Also, how you can access the homepage node. Just using that get route and putting in the forward slash will give you the correct node. So I think there are some useful things there. Please let me know if you agree with me by hitting that like button. Also, if you'd like to see me do any content on Umbraco in particular, please leave a comment because I do read them all and I am always looking for ideas for content. So if you'd like to see the rest of the series, remember, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because that will make you a legend. Also, if you'd like to learn more about CMS, just how to become the best developer you can be. I also do a weekly newsletter every Sunday. So the link is below. Subscribe, there's an unsubscribe button if you don't like it. No win, no loss. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you're having the amazing day wherever you are and you're not too hungover. And happy coding.